In this video, we're going to show you how to use the base network. And we'll be showing you how to add the base network to your wallet, how to send, receive and bridge tokens, and add the swap tokens to your wallet. And then finally, how to use the base network with decentralized applications such as Uniswap. And there'll be a timeline in the video description for those looking to jump to specific parts of this tutorial. First up, a little bit about the BASE network. BASE is a layer 2 scaling solution for Ethereum and it was developed by Coinbase. The BASE network is designed to improve the scalability and usability of Ethereum, making transactions faster and cheaper while maintaining the security and decentralization of the Ethereum blockchain. One of the key benefits of BASE network is its ability to handle a large number of transactions at low cost compared to the main Ethereum network. This makes it an excellent choice for users who frequently interact with decentralized applications, trade tokens, or perform other blockchain activities that require fast and cost-effective transactions. The base network is fully compatible with Ethereum, meaning that any dApp or service that runs on Ethereum can easily be integrated with base. And this opens up a wide range of possibilities for users who engage with popular dApps from decentralized exchanges like Uniswap to various DeFi platforms with improved performance and lower fees. So let's dive in and see how you can get started with BASE. The first thing we'll need to use the BASE network is a cryptocurrency wallet. And you'll find the likes of Metamask, Trust Wallet, and the Coinbase Wallet all support the BASE network. If you don't already have one of these wallets, I do have full tutorials available for all of these. But I'll quickly show you how to connect BASE network to Metamask if it's not already set up. If it is, you can obviously skip this step. So if we head across to Metamask and click on the list of networks in the top left. If the base network isn't appearing here, you may need to manually add this. So if we choose Add Network from the bottom, you'll see that base network appearing in the list, which we can then add. And it will show you all the details for this network to approve. Once the network has been added successfully, you can then switch MetaMask to use the BASE mainnet. And when you're new, you'll then receive some information about BASE, letting you know that the gas fees that you're going to be paying with is ETH, a reminder to bridge your tokens across networks, and then not all your tokens will automatically add into MetaMask. So you may need to add these in manually. And I'll show you examples of both bridging and adding tokens during this tutorial. Your base address then shows as per usual under your account, which you can copy from here. You can then see that you're on the base name net in the top left. Now you will find that your Ethereum address is exactly the same across all of these different networks, and it doesn't change, so you do have the same address. But what's important though is to ensure that you choose the correct network, in this case base, when you're sending your tokens, which is what we're going to do shortly. Now, if you're not using MetaMask and you're using the Trust Wallet instead, this wallet also supports the base network and you won't need to add the network manually. When you choose to receive and tap on all the networks drop down, here you'll eventually find base amongst all the other different networks that are supported. Now, annoyingly, this isn't in alphabetical order, so you may need to search for it from the top. When you select that, you'll see all the different supported tokens for base. And they're also indicated showing the tokens logo and then the base logo in the bottom right of it. When you choose a token, you'll then find its wallet address and the base network also showing here. And you'll find the same thing over with the Coinbase wallet, which is automatically configured with base. And the tokens will show with the logos of the networks that they're on. Next, let's send some ETH to the base network. As it stated earlier, I'm going to need some Ethereum to pay for the gas fees. And these are required whenever there's a transaction made on the blockchain. And this could be for trading, sending or staking, for example. If you don't already have some Ethereum, you can buy it on a number of different cryptocurrency exchanges that support BASE, such as Binance and, of course, Coinbase. I've got some Ethereum over on the Coinbase exchange. And if you don't already have a Coinbase or a Binance account, I'll have some links in the summary. So I'm going to head across there now. Then choose Send and Receive over in the top right. And I'm on the send tab. I need to choose the crypto that I want to send from the drop down. I'm going to select Ethereum and enter how much that I'd like to send in USD. 
It'll then ask where I'm sending this Ethereum to. And as it states, I need to select the network and the recipient. As you can see, base is showing up in the list, as well as an estimated fee. So if you compare this to the likes of the Ethereum network, this is significantly lower. You'll then need to confirm that the wallet accepts ETH on the base network, which as we know it does. It will then prompt me for my Ethereum address to send to. So in this example, I'm going to be using my MetaMask wallet, but the process will be very similar regardless of the wallet you're using. Let's head across to MetaMask. And I've got my wallet expanded to show you this now. That's why it may look a little bit different to yours. First, you need to ensure that you've got the base network selected. Then copy the wallet address to your clipboard by clicking onto it. And you just then need to paste that in over on Coinbase and hit enter. Then preview send. It will then show you a summary of your transaction, letting you know the network it's sending on, which is base, the fee here, which is really low at one cent, and how fast it's going to go through, which as they state is less than a minute. Then the total. When you're happy, choose send now. You can then view the transaction on the blockchain, which is showing that the transfer is complete and that was just under 14 seconds, so it was super fast. Plus it confirms the actual fee that I paid for this. Now let's head across to our wallet, which in our case is MetaMask, where we'll see that our ETH is now appearing on the base network. As I said, the same process would apply for other wallets too. Just instead of copying your wallet address in MetaMask, you'd copy and paste your wallet address from your chosen wallet. Next, let's discuss bridging. So bridging is the process of moving a token from one network to another. So say for example, you've got some Ethereum on the main Ethereum network and you want to get that over on the base network instead. Well, there's two different ways that you can do this. First, you can use an actual bridge. However, just be warned that the fees can be quite high here and I'm going to show you an example of this in a moment. The second way is by sending your tokens across to an exchange like Binance or Coinbase if they're not there already and then withdraw them on the base network. And this may work out cheaper when fees are high and effectively has the same end result. When you're using a bridge, the process is very similar, but it'll differ depending on the wallet that you're using. MetaMask has this option from the blue icons here under your balance, which is available from the main wallet screen. When we click on it, you'll then be directed to bridge tokens. Here, I can transfer from the Ethereum network to the base network. Now a bit of advice here is to connect your wallet first. For some reason, I came across some issues when I selected the networks and the tokens first, and then I tried to connect the wallet afterwards. And it may not happen to you, but just in case it does, try connecting your wallet first. And you do have to connect your MetaMask wallet because the bridge also works with other wallets too, and not just their own. You'll then need to choose the account that you wanna use with the bridge, then choose next and connect. Once that's done, you'll see the account or the address connected in the top right. So now we can say that we want to bridge our tokens from the Ethereum network. Then we say which tokens on Ethereum we'd like to bridge. In my case, that's ETH. Then state the network that you want to bridge them to, and we'll choose the base network. Then enter the amount of ETH that you'd like to send. And we want to receive these as ETH on the base network. It will then go away and find the best possible rates or prices. Once that's finished calculating, you'll see here that this is the best price with a cross. But we can view the other options available too by clicking on view different quotes. However, as you can see, the gas fees are higher and the times are actually slower. And it will show you the total and the amount that you're going to be paying in gas fees plus the MetaMask fees that also apply here too. If you're happy, you can go ahead and confirm. And you'll then need to confirm that in your MetaMask wallet. Your transaction will then be in progress and you can view the status from here. So as you can see, the transaction is now confirmed. So let's head across to our MetaMask wallet. And under the activity tab, here we can see our bridged ETH and this is currently showing on the Ethereum network. If I wanted to view the bridged ETH in MetaMask, we'd then need to switch networks to base. Now, as I said, other wallets also have the ability to bridge. So as you can see, the Coinbase wallet has that now from the home screen. And you can simply choose which network you want to swap from and to. 
Now I don't have anything in this wallet here to show you and the fees are quite a bit higher here too. Now although the fee that I paid earlier on Metamask wasn't particularly expensive, it was a small transaction and this process can be expensive on other wallets or just when the congestion on Ethereum is high. So as I said, you can find an exchange that supports the base network like Coinbase again or Binance. You send your tokens there, then simply send them back on the base network. And this gets your tokens on the base network without having to use a bridge. But obviously, you will be paying gas fees for sending your tokens there and back, which you'll just need to weigh up. Then once you have some Ethereum on the base network, what can you do with it? Well, you can connect your wallet to some popular decentralized applications such as Uniswap, Aave and SushiSwap. Let's connect our wallet to Uniswap so that we can swap some tokens. You can see the network that you want to trade on. Let's choose Base. Then choose Connect Wallet in the top right or from the center of the screen and choose your wallet. You can choose from a few here, including the Coinbase wallet and you can also connect up your Trust Wallet using Wallet Connect. When I choose MetaMask, I'll need to connect to an account and connect. And because my MetaMask currently has the Ethereum mainnet selected, it'll switch it for me over to the base network. If I choose switch network, which I'm going to do now. Your base network address will then appear in the top right and your ETH balance will appear in the center. So I've got a balance of ETH in my wallet that we can use to swap to another token. So I'd like to swap 0.01 of my ETH. When I select token, you'll then have a list of all the different tokens available on the base network. I'm going to select USDC now, which is a stable coin. Once that's entered, it will show me how much of that that I'll receive for my 0.01 ETH. And further down, you'll see the network fee, which is 13 cents, and you'll find that's particularly low, especially if you're used to swapping on the Ethereum mainnet. Let's go ahead and swap now, where we can then preview this swap, which we'll just need to confirm. I'll also need to confirm that in my MetaMask wallet, and as you can see, that's a success. So let's have a look at my MetaMask wallet again now to take a look at our tokens. And I'm on the base network, as you can see in the top left. If I check out the execute transaction, I can see the swap transaction over on base scan. And this confirms the exact fee that I paid was 13 cents. However, under tokens, my USDC tokens aren't actually appearing in my wallet. And if you're using something like the Coinbase wallet, they'll automatically detect but MetaMask sometimes make you add or import these manually. There's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you now using CoinMarketCap. So if you search for the token that you want to add, which in this case is USDC, then over on the left-hand side of the screen, under Contract Address and More, locate the base network. And here you'll see the option to add to Trust Wallet, MetaMask, or you can copy the address. Then from MetaMask, choose Import Tokens. And here is where you can paste in that contract address. And the details have now automatically populated and understands that this is for USDC. So I'll choose Next, then Import. And as you can see, the tokens have now successfully imported and my USDC is now appearing in my list of tokens. So that completes how you can use the base network.